Oh, hey everyone. I'm Aaron. I'm Lori. We're Plan Free, and this is the video of the time we lived in Costa Rica the second time, in Sierpe and Osa Mountain, for five months. We flew into the San Jose airport with the plan that we were going to catch a bus from there to Sierpe. Things ended up going not quite according to plan, and we had to sleep in the San Jose airport on the floor for about five hours until we could catch the next bus. The bus ride was about six hours with no AC. Things got a little warm on the way, but we did make a couple of pit stops, crossing some croc infested rivers and a few beaches along the way. Arriving in the area that we were gonna stay, we passed through Palmar Norte, through a bunch of palm fields, arriving in Sierpe. This was our first house sitting arrangement, and so the plan was to meet the outgoing house sitters at the marina. Once we found this spot, we met up with the previous couple where we exchanged the house keys and the primary mode of transportation to get to and from, which was a boat. After a couple of vague directions, basically head up the river 10 minutes, first dock on your left, that kind of thing, Lori and I jumped in our new wheels and we headed up the river. Turns out the house was right where they said it was. We found a parking spot and pulled in and tried to find where we would be staying for the next four months. There were about three houses in this yard and we weren't totally sure which one we were staying in. So we did a little walkabout and uh, our hands were full of luggage. So out of nowhere, this little jungle dog comes flying at us, paws first and gets me right you know where. And Lori's like, oh honey, I don't want a stray dog hanging around here the whole time. And I was like, oh honey, don't worry, we'll probably never see that dog again. We find the house that we're going to be staying in and it's time for us to have a look around. Fairly small house overall but really comfortable. No AC so we learned how to do certain things like how to stay cool and when to be inside and outside. But we started to make a home of it where we would set up an office and I would work on the computer. Lori would do things like work out, keeping it tight. Keep it we would stream things like NHL hockey games so we could get a little feeling of home back in Canada. Lori would set up in the little kitchen that we had there and do her magic. We had a few cravings from home and one day Eric came to me and said, Honey, I'm really craving donairs. So I whipped them up. We had some amazing flowers growing in the yard and in the surrounding jungle. So we often clipped some and brought the beauty inside. In this area, there's a fairly pronounced rainy season until about Christmas time. And then the rain just stops. Lori and I were able to have a fairly modest little tropical Christmas where we exchange gifts, wrap them in whatever materials we had around the house, and make the best of the celebration that we could when we were away from home in another country. So this stray jungle dog that we were never gonna see again was a permanent fixture at the house. He firmly believed he lived there, he never <laughs> left the place after the first meeting, and uh, he became part of the family. So we adopted him. He turned out to be a really good boy, pretty pretty calm during the day and quite the guard dog at night. Lori really helped Zorro expand his horizons. He was pretty much scared of everything when we met him, but she taught him how to do things like swim, how to go for a boat ride. Next thing you know, he's the king of the world. He's basically the captain out on the bow, showing us everything. Uh, it came to the point where if we even stepped outside, he would rip down to the dock and sit by the boat just in case we were going somewhere. So the arrangement that we entered into here on this property was to basically be a presence in the house, which is fairly standard in a house sit, but also to take care of the yard, which was by memory about an acre and a half. And of course you're living in the jungle so things grow fast. It ended up to where Lori and I would spend multiple hours most days in the yard trying to keep it trimmed and manicured. This was a novel experience for us, so I did have a little bit of fun turning into a quasi jungle man. <laughs> Most of the time, we really liked the work. It was kind of fun building little fire piles, but we weren't smart enough to figure out that we could hire somebody local to come in for 20 or $30 and do it for us. So 
So being outside in the yard so much in the surrounding area, this was our first experience with jungle life and the things that go along with that. For example, our yard and surrounding area had a variety of bounty. Food items that we would regularly find and be able to gather in the yard would be things like pineapple, star fruit trees, avocados, big banana patches, guava, water apple. There were lots of coconuts, papaya groves, which we would have to fight with the two cans and arakaris to get the ripe ones because if you didn't get them at the right time those birds would come in and eat them on you. Yeah. As far as critters and animals go you would have frequent encounters with many different things. They don't really have the ability to separate between jungle and your house so oftentimes you would find these right inside whether it be frog migration or scorpions many insects snakes spiders and our new guard dog Zorro alerted us to an intruder yeah that being a collared anteater that uh, innocently walked into the yard one day and it was on that was an excellent experience. Unfortunately, thanks to Zorro, we never saw that guy again, but he was unharmed. Sometimes we would find possums on a pole in the night. You'd hear them. Super Zorro would go crazy over that. Other times we'd be out working in the yard and we'd come across a baby possum. No idea where it came from. We'd do our best to try to move it to safety. On the bird side of things, it was toucans or aracaries or macaws, uh, hummingbirds variety of different things. It was pretty cool. If you like wildlife, this is an excellent part of Costa Rica to visit. We were forever interacting with these things and it was uh, awesome. and it, yeah, it was all a new experience for us and it was very stimulating. I was stimulated. Sometimes at the end of a hard day of work, we'd grab a quick shower, mix a cocktail or two and take the five minute walk down to the dock where we could catch a sunset, enjoy a cocktail together listening to the howler monkeys and of course imitating them back to see if we could get some convo going. <laughs> nice one. This was one of our favorite activities to wind down after a hard day. Practicing our monkey call. We did do that a lot. Other times we'd take the same cocktail idea and instead of just stopping at the dock we'd load everybody in the boat, and that being my monkey spotting gang, Lori and Zorro, and we would head down river or up river or into one of the Azules. It didn't take very long to where you'd get into a smaller portion where the bamboo would grow over the river, creating a wildlife corridor, and we would go on monkey watching tours. And this was usually not a problem to come across these guys. They were kind of everywhere. Three different species of monkeys that we saw commonly being the howler monkeys, capuchin, and spider monkeys. All three of these different species would have kind of unique behavior patterns and personality styles. Living in the jungle and having your primary mode of transportation being boat up and down a river even little things like going to get groceries was a more involved process and generally took at least half the day to do. So for example, if we needed something, it involved unlocking the shed, carrying down the motor to the boat, attaching it, taking the boat into Sierra Bay and parking it at the marina, then walking to the bus stop, catching a bus from Sierra Bay into Palmar and Norte, walking about 10 minutes over to the grocery store, filling up a couple backpacks full of groceries, and then reversing the process, walking back to the bus stop, catching a bus from Palmar and Norte, back through Palm Country into Sierra Bay, and walking back over to the marina where we could jump in the boat and then motor another 10 minutes up river to our home. Walk up the dock through the yard, drop off our backpacks, walk back down, get the motor, carry it back up and lock it back up in the shed. So simply dropping down to the grocery store to get a few items wasn't really an option. We literally had to basically plan a whole day just to get food. This was a new experience. It had its ups and downs, but also created some fun memories for us. When it came time to do a little boat trip into Sierpe, it would usually involve things like going to the same location to pay our electric bill and or our internet. Sometimes we would walk down the street a little bit there to refill our five gallon jugs of water or a little bit further down the same street to have a bite to eat at the restaurant there that overlooked the river. 
we would spend many days in a row at this property not going out anywhere. So sometimes to gain a change of pace, we'd jump in the boat and take river tours. These would include things like heading down river about an hour or so and arrive at the outlet where it would meet the ocean. And we would have a good time hanging around the beach. We were shown this beach by some friends the first time and I think we would return there from time to time and uh, just play around and have a beach day for a change. It's so beautiful. Another time our river run involved going the other way or inland. Up river, up river, it would progressively get smaller and smaller. We had some acquaintances lead the way in another boat, a larger boat than ours, and it was kind of amazing to me that they got it up this area. So it was our little boat gang. We finally arrived at a Stillwater Lake or Lagoon. The idea was to get up there and do some fishing and maybe sightsee some crocodiles. We ended up arriving there at around midday and so it wasn't the best time to either fish or view crocodiles. We did try things like do a little bit of fishing. I whipped out the fly rods basically just for some giggles. But I can tell you the adventure of getting there and getting back was a lot of fun. I think by the time we arrived home things were getting pretty dark so I think we spent the majority of the day on that adventure. We did a couple of border runs. Costa Rica borders Panama right there down south. Early on in our arrival, we went to the border with a friend and stocked up on some uh, good deals. We were surprised by the look of Paso Canoas. We thought it would be a big shopping kind of center and it was a little dirtier than we thought, but there were definitely deals. Another time we crossed the border and spent three days in Panama to renew the visa. We jumped on a, like a bigger Greyhound type bus, went down south to the border of Panama a little on the other side and then came home again to Costa Rica. After four months of living in the jungle in Sierpe on the river property, it was time for us to move to a place called Osa Mountain for the final month of our Costa Rican stay. This place had its similarities to Sierpe but it also had its differences. One of the main differences is that it was in a high elevation cloud type rainforest. What that meant is it was considerably cooler up there. Oftentimes it would be sunny and beautiful, but then without notice, a big bank of clouds could roll through and totally change the optical environment. It would be misty, foggy, cool, really quite beautiful. The layout of the resort in Osa had a nice recreational feel to it. So one section of it had a big pool that you could enjoy and swim, relax and exercise in. Just off of this it had a covered bar area with things like a pool table for billiards, ping pong table, one of the guys made a cornhole set up. Many nights we'd enjoy visiting around this area, playing music, pool, staying up too late because none of us had any appointments the next day so it was very relaxed. In a similar sense to Sierpe, this area had a wide bounty of foods and vegetables available just growing off the land. Other times we would enjoy short jungle walks in the area and these had a lot of things going on to stimulate the senses, you know, whether it be wildlife or in some cases a very rare green dark frog. These walks were often steep and narrow paths and frequently they would end at the bottom of or the top of a gorgeous waterfall which unfortunately we don't have any pictures of because we've torched our media storage device so you're just gonna have to take our word for it you know sometimes along these walks we would see things like macaws or we'd be able to collect fresh ylang ylang off the trees bring it back into our apartment and improve the uh, overall smell of the place <laughs> At some point a group of us decided it would be a good idea to have a pizza party. And so this involved another short walk through the jungle into a little bit more of a remote location that had an indoor outdoor type setup, a kitchen, an outdoor fire pit, it had a fully functional wood fired oven. Yeah, and one of the guys was able to expertly make beautiful pizzas for us. Thanks Jose, that was awesome. Other times, guys, we'd jump in uh, someone's vehicle and we'd head down the mountain and take in some of the beaches of the area. We wish we had done this more often, but this location here is a prime example of us to consider a do-over. With a car. And the drone. 
<laughs> Thanks for joining us as we remember the second time we lived in Costa Rica. We hope you enjoyed this journey with us. It's the type of location that's tailor-made for wildlife lovers, people that want a more relaxed pace of life. They like a warm climate with some humidity and they don't mind interacting with the jungle. My name's Air. I'm Lori. This has been Plan Free's Stroll Down Jungle Lane as we remember <laughs> the time we lived in Sierpe and Osa, Costa Rica. There will be more videos coming out on the places we live. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. It helps a lot. We'll see you next time, which I believe will be the video of the time we lived in Panama for six months. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Oh my gosh, is it recording? Yeah.